So this is an example for um, a residential building that, um, for example, I've completed the model. I've included a bunch of different templates, um, broke down the details into energy, the recurring impacts, the products, so the initial materials, the water impacts, end of life impacts, and some benefits here. Um, could be energy export, could be recycling. So I have a pretty good um, completed model now, and now I want to improve this model. And one very good report I often use is the, the top impacts report. For those who haven't used it before, you just go to reports and then you select the last report, which is the top impacts report. All users have access to this report. It's just a very nice way to break down the impacts in more details. You can select the number of items that you want to display, the top 10 or top 5 or top 20. And you can also select the, the indicator you want to run against. So this is really useful, for example, uh, if you're working on a Green Star project, and in Green Star, there's a, a limitation with the, the impact increase, right? If you get an impact increase above 10%, uh, that cancels the whole LCA credit. So if you want to understand, if for any reason, your model has an impact increase and you want to understand where the, the, that impact is coming from, you can run this report, select that specific indicator, and then scrutinize the results to find where the, the impacts are coming from. So it's not only you know, to identify where the impacts are, but also filter between different indicators as well. Uh, I often run the GWP indicator, which is you know, the main carbon performance, and a lot of things are correlated to carbon, so it's mainly what I start with. So you see, um, if you haven't used this table before, it can be very confusing when you look at it the first time. You know, it's a bunch of numbers, different columns. But once you get the understanding of how it, it's set up, it's not very complicated because it's, it's divided into um, different sections. So we have the top materials. And then we have um, also in this here the top top ten materials by total impact, and then the top ten materials by transport impact, and that's filtered through um, to just get this pointer back. Then we have recurring impact here, yeah. recurring impact. Um, Then we'll have people and equipment and operational energy. So when you look at this, for example, the top 10 materials, and we look at the list of these materials, you know, you have the, all the initial, the transport, and then you have the total here at the end. You see it's dominated by, well, the, probably the top three materials here, uh, the dominated impacts, but it's always a surprise. In this case, for example, there's a refrigerant gas here, R134, and it's, it has to do with uh, fugitive emissions, you know, the end of life scenario for this gas or the maintenance, the leakage. There's something going on here on this assumption that is causing this gas, this refrigerant gas, to be, you know, the top three material impact. You know, concrete and steel is very well known. All projects that use concrete and steel will have these materials highlighted, but once you get into, you know, refrigerant gases or sometimes you get, um, like this one, for example, solar PV, the, the embodied impact of PV, for example, is quite big, but you also have to note the proportion, you know, so this is in kilograms of carbon, so this is um, uh, one one thousand ton, eight eight hundred tons 
and the, the PV is 200 tons, 191 tons carbon. So it's also important to understand the, the relevance. You know, it's, although it's listed at the top 10, it's also important to see how relevant they are compared to the total. So there's always a surprise here. You find things that you can probably model wrong or had the wrong assumption, the end of life scenario or the quantity. Sometimes you used, you know, different unit instead of cubic meters or instead of uh, area, you used volume and that threw off the results. So it's very useful as well to pick up mistakes and um, understand where the impacts are and how relevant they are. So for the materials, for example, and you have to be careful here because the materials, you see that it's, um, it's listed as the top 10 impacts by transport. So you actually have to look through this, this column here. That's how this um, section of the report is ordered. So the, the top 10 impacts by transport, looking at the transport column. And the same thing will apply for the, the recurring impacts. When you look at the, the top 10 recurring impacts, uh, let me just get this right here. Here the recurring impacts will have the same, same, same thing. So you have to look at the, the recurring column here. And here you can see again the gas um it's quite big the aluminum frame for the windows so this has to do with uh, the service life probably in this building which is a motor residential building in high density it's, it's going to last a long time it's very unlikely that we get knocked down uh, before i don't know 60 to 80 years so it's saying that the the windows will get replaced so that just triggers a lot of interesting um, opportunities for procurement, you know, warranty periods and maintenance intervals and helps you with, uh, you know, the material selection and the system selection as well. So quite, quite a good, useful report. There's a lot to take from this report. You know, the more you scrutinize the results, the better value you get. It helps you with modeling um, equipment can be quite big if you're running the model for lead, for example, where lead is more focused on the embodied impacts, not so much operational energy or operational water. Uh, equipment, depending on the foundation type or, or yeah, the machinery that you use on site, can be quite significant. You know, if you're using uh, pile drivers and excavators and generators, they can be um, significant proportion of the impact so you can just filter them through here understand which equipment is um, dominating the impact and understand the yeah, filter verify your assumptions same thing with the operational energy although operational energy you can have a more yeah a better vision when you navigating through your your model let me just go back to the model when you navigate into the operational energy section just gives you more graphical information about the, where the impacts are coming from, the proportion, the, the breakdown, you know, graphical and, and numbers. So yeah, quite a, quite a useful report, the, the top impact report.